Thank you so much for coming, Gumaraj. So here we have all of the initiated disciples as well as um, accepted uh, aspiring disciples and also some the devotees that have joined us who will now be, you will acknowledge their introduction, they're introducing their intent to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I can see Karin is there translating. Everybody, please turn your uh, microphones off. Um, and uh, and and we've got a whole room full of uh, devotees over here. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, the. Uh, we got six pages, so I can't really. Uh, I can't really say hello to uh, to everybody. Uh, I'll just say hello, everybody, and uh, that should more cover cover that. Uh, I am going to say hello to uh, devotees who are on uh, on this list. Uh, Chaitanya uh, Chand Chandra Prabhu's list. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you all for queuing in. Uh, I know from different parts of the world, it's uh, not so uh, easy. Some places it's very early. There's a new Rajadam temple room. Uh, We got some uh, music in the background, and uh, oh, I see Palika uh, over there, and uh, Bhakti Pad Goswami. Where I thought he's here, is he, is he here? No, well, uh, he's there. Yes, but, yes, I'm here, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. But here. Here means on the screen. I'm just thinking here means here in Mayapur. Oh, uh, I uh, tomorrow I fly to Mayapur. Oh, oh, oh okay. And after, and after tomorrow. I... Okay. Mangala Gopi, where are you? Are you all the way up uh, east or west? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Um, right now I'm in the US already, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay, good. So then it's early and it's yeah. a good time, good time for you. Seven whole pages, boy. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm just going to uh, go back and, uh, and first we're going to go through uh, a little introductions, right, Chaitanya Chandra? Yes, Guru Maharaj. This is uh, just as we've done with the last um, few meetings, and this customary two times a year, then devotees uh, will be requesting to be either introduced, they're introducing their intent to develop a relationship with Guru Maharaj with the idea of becoming a disciple. And um, so, those devotees that are introducing themselves, uh, Guru Maharaj will acknowledge them. That doesn't mean that they're uh, officially aspiring disciples. This is just a trial period. So they cannot chant the pranam mantras of uh, their Guru Maharaj or their, of Maharaj. But then uh, at a later stage, uh, there is a the next stage, which is called being accepted, taking shelter. And we will have a list here of devotees who will be taking shelter, uh, being accepted, officially accepted as aspiring disciples. And uh, then they have permission to chant their Guru's Pranam Mantra. And I will send that to them after this uh, um, acknowledgement. So mm. Guru Maharaj has a list of, uh, of 14 devotees that are 
he will acknowledge their introduction and also 10 devotees that will become now aspiring disciples uh, and uh, will receive the Pranam Mantra. So we'll just go through the list and, and um, that will be an official acknowledgement for everybody. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm just going to pull out that. Uh, I just uh, I tell everybody that uh, Chaitanya Chandra has done this really, oops, Suksha Diksha. I've already opened it once. So where where is it? Where should it be? Uh, in the bottom. Or is, does it come up in mail? Does that come up in uh, Safari? Does it come up in Safari? It should do. Okay. Just... Mm -hmm. um, no, it's not. It's not there. I'm just gonna have to prove that I'm not a not a, a robot. On the... <laughs> It's probably, it's, oh no, that seems like it's, I'm okay for the day. So it's uh, Aspiring Disciples queued, right? That's correct. Uh, yes, devotees don't, uh, don't know. Uh, have you, uh, by the way. Sorry, Gurmaj, I muted you accidentally there. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, we're there. Yeah, sorry. yeah. just uh, remind devotees, please don't connect your microphones because I'm trying to mute you and I might accidentally do what I just did now where I muted Guru Maharaj. So please don't connect your microphones. Thank you. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Uh, back to here. Is there any way that you can uh, pull up the pictures as I call the names? to um, to devote to the screen i don't know I, probably yeah okay anyway if you can uh chaitanya chandra has done a real wonderful service this is a uh, such a fantastic uh it's uh i don't know what it, it's called shiksha to diksha and uh it's all on my disciple database. And uh, it's uh, really phenomenally well set up. It's user-friendly. It's, uh, it's extremely, uh, extremely good. And uh, it's, it, it's getting a little full. I'm not going to talk about that because I've talked about it before. And we've got uh, two uh lists we're just going to go quick uh, through quickly those who are uh waiting for introduction in other words they haven't been introduced yet and uh we get does this uh this qualifies as the introduction yes this does okay I sure wish that uh, we could uh, see each other face to face. That's a better introduction. And then an acceptance. Uh, yeah, the other day, who was, oh yes, I was speaking with uh, Radha Krishna Prabhu and Priti Priti, and they were asking that uh, if I'm not in, uh, in Hungary in the fall, usually, we have initiations twice a year, and uh, the second one is in Radastami. So if I'm uh, if I'm not there, would I do it online? And I said no. Uh, unless I'm really forced by circumstance, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to uh, be obliged to go on. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to be forced to uh, go online. So, uh, devotees, uh, anybody, whether you're, you know, 
waiting for one thing or introduction or acceptance and we'll talk a little more about this uh yeah come uh if you want to if you want to really uh if we want to introduce each other and it's really not just uh something quite formal like this then uh, wherever you are, uh, just come. And then I'll talk a little more about that uh, later on. In fact, let me talk about it when I finish. Okay, so here's the person who's waiting for introduction. And we're starting off with uh, Ben Matthews. And uh, he's all the way off in Australia. Uh, and uh, Hare Krishna to Ben. I didn't uh, know whether he was online or not. Uh, it looks like a very uh very friendly type chap of course australians are like that and then here's uh bota miklos who what happened are you doing something chaitanya channel bota miklos who's uh yeah we know each other from a long time he's from eger very uh famous famous town and uh and we've got Erika Molnar who is written here from Shomoj Vamush. I mean she's not from she lives in Shomoj Vamush. She's beside the farm. That means she's living beside the farm. So Hare Krishna, Erika. And now Eugenia Kosha Koshareva. And uh, she is in Novorossiysk. Hare Krishna, uh, and uh, looks uh, out in the country, looks uh, quite jolly lady. And uh, also uh, there's another lady after her, which is Julash Zofia, uh, and she's from Hungary. She's from Budapest, uh, uh, Gore Krishna Prabhu, one of her, uh, one of his protégés. Uh, Hare Krishna Sophia. Um, then uh, we have uh, Jim uh, Geeves, and uh, from the UK, from famous place called Egerton. Uh, if you don't know where Egerton is, then 50% of your life is <laughs> gone. Uh, Hare Krishna uh, Jim. And uh, after that, is uh, Yuhas Zuzana, and she's from Budapest, and uh, she's Maharani's protege. She's Maharani's back here. Uh, and uh, then there's Kezer Tunde, also from uh, Hungary, uh, and uh, he's, she's got this really nice picture of Srimati Radharani's lotus feet just behind her head. Uh, and another uh, lady from uh, Hungary, Kecskemét, which is Kosha Julia, uh, and yeah, she's been she's been around a long time. Uh, then uh, in uh, from Budapest, Hungary, Kulcsár Andrea, Hare Krishna, yeah, she's been uh, coming for a while, and Slovenia. Slovenia is Aleja Ursic, uh, and uh, she's from uh, Ljubljana, and uh, Ananta Vijay, devotee over there, is recommending her. Um, Hare Krishna. Interesting, if these devotees are, if they're not inside, they're all outside in some pastoral setting, no one's like in a downtown. Uh, obviously, it's not okay now. Here, uh, not something uh, so uh, nice to take a picture of. Here's from Minsk, Belarus, and this is Maria Shukodoskaya. Anyway, I hope uh, uh, I did that right. And uh, Hare Krishna, Maria. Well, I'd really like to be able to meet all of these people. Uh, then we got Sabo Kristina, Baluk uh, Tivadarne, 
uh, who's uh, from uh, Tapio Sela. Now that's such a uh, well-known place, even I don't know where it is. A school one. Pashmati Okay, okay, that's around uh, Budapest and uh, Hare Krishna, Christina. And the last person here is uh, Bhakta Laszlo, Vatapal Laszlo. And uh, yes, we know him quite well. His picture here, he looks like a uh, real Sicilian mafioso, <laughs> especially since he doesn't have TLAC on. But anyway, he's not from Sicily, he's from Kachkamit. Uh, and uh, Shamiju was recommending him. So Hare Krishna to these 14 devotees. And I hope that, uh, yeah, some of you, I mean, especially the ones in Hungary, then I meet and I know, although, you know, it's good if uh, you make appointment, come over sometime or we meet together. Uh, hard to make appointment. Uh, let me just, uh, before I go on to the next one, here is initiated disciples. And I was just looking at that before. Uh, I'm quite surprised at this. 382 first initiates. And those who are first and second, I take it, uh, Chaitanya Chandra are 409. Well, I guess if someone's got second, he's got first initiation. It's 492. Uh, I'm surprised that so many devotees uh, yeah, don't have uh, don't have second initiation. Uh, very surprising. But altogether, that makes a list of eight hundred and seventy-four. So obviously, uh, if uh, Sham Bihari was already telling me how tired he is, if uh, you eight hundred and seventy-four people try and make an appointment with him, I'm going to lose him for sure. So it just uh, it, it doesn't work. Uh, and as much as I uh, like to have devotees come, uh, but uh, it's just impossible for me to be able to talk to everybody. Okay, let's do some quick math. 365, 874. That means I'm talking to two and a half devotees uh, a day. If I talk to them individually for 45 minutes, so that's going to make two hours, two and a half hours. Uh, you, you may say that's not a lot, uh, but and in the past it wasn't. But uh, I, I just don't have that two and a half hours anymore. Uh, my health issues take up too much time. Uh, I've got other things to maintain uh, health, such as uh, swimming. I've got uh, writing. I do have other services still in regards to Hungary, deity worship, construction, and beautification, and things like that. I, I don't have the two and a half hours. Even here in my port, I was just complaining earlier that uh, it's uh, it's getting a bit too much. It's getting a bit too busy for me over here every single uh, afternoon to uh, ha have a, a conference and a meeting and uh, for devotees then we think well it's only just i only get half an hour a year well, you only get half an hour a year but it all adds up it all adds up okay now waiting for acceptance alma shigabi from Malta, from Malta. Living in Malta. She's living in Malta. Oh, she's from, she's from Saget. Uh, oh, I didn't know she was living in Malta. Yeah, got that long, long, long time. Probably like 25 years. Uh, Dobos Gabor uh, in Kachkamit, Hungary. Yeah, we know him also. Uh, uh, very well, and uh, and Dominic Dominic Formanek from Prague, 
Look how beautiful he looks without that uh, horrible beard. <laughs> There's a real handsome guy underneath all that fuzz. <laughs> Yeah, we know he's been coming for a long time. And uh, Franchitz Eva, uh, from Budapest. And yes, I've seen her. She looks very serious. And then there's Kartika, Hare Krishna. I didn't see her as I was going along. She is from other Italy. And uh, she's uh, doing service. She's like, uh, Gurukuli, and now she's uh, doing service in uh, uh, New Rajadam in the Dehiri department. And then also uh, from Krishna world, we have Kurti Havashka. And uh, Havashka, if you don't know, in, in well, you can't translate it into English. It's like, I guess you could say snowflake. <laughs> so it's a nice, uh, a nice name. From Switzerland. Wow, at least we'll get one organized disciple. Lukas Stokci, and uh, he's, uh, yeah, he lives in uh, Zurich and he's serving over there. Uh, and from the UK, uh, then there's, if this is Petter, this is Petter Ole Framborg. And he's over here right now, but he's from uh, Wales, and Trakanath Prabhu is uh, recommending him. Although, interestingly, just recently I got this very uh, enthusiastic letter from one one disciple who said that I should promote Trakanath as a guru. <laughs> and... Uh, so I, I haven't replied to that yet. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> and then we got uh, Tanchich Zolt, who's from Krishna Village, and uh, whom we know, Hare Krishna. And then Yakupo Fidan Paritovich uh, from Russia. Well, you don't know, you don't see his picture. You're not putting up the pictures, right? No, I'll work out the next time. This time, not possible. But I can probably share the screen and show that. Wow, I can understand why you want to show it. Let me just share the screen. Uh, yeah, he looks like super devotional. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you, you see? Yeah, every yeah, I see it, and uh, of course, I see it anyway. Um, Everybody else can see the picture of Vidan. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so yeah, very devotional, all on his knees and uh, very serious in front of this huge, big Tulsi tree. And uh, I don't know where this is. I suspect it's a temple. Uh, I suspect it's a temple. Okay. And he's in, where is he in? He is in uh, Kumerto, uh, which I don't, I don't know. Um, so, Hare Krishna to all these devotees. Uh, maybe we can just give everybody uh, a clap. And uh, glad to see, glad to see that you are recording in progress. Uh, no. I'm going to uh, ask Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu what the uh, theme was, and uh, he said we should talk about uh, don't waste time, life is short. Uh, don't leave it for later to cultivate Krishna consciousness. And I am going to uh, I am going to speak about that briefly and did we want questions? We have a few questions. We have one related question and we have some uh, other questions that are not related. So we do have some questions here, yeah. Okay, okay. And I guess if uh, the devotees here want to uh, ask questions, go online and uh, put, it, put them up online. 
if you want to turn the fans on any further than they're, they're over there. Uh, that just turns, no, 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 it, it, it doesn't, you're just turning, it won't touch, I'm saying no. They're over there, a little far out of your reach. Uh, what I wanted to uh, mention, but before I do, we're going to, well, devotees can't see, but we're sitting here in front of, uh, and Lord Jagannath, and this is on the auspicious day of Bhaktisthanda Sarasvati Thakur's appearance. <clears throat> so let's offer our respectful obeisances. Namo Mishtupadaya Krishna Krishna Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine, Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gaurabhan Charine. Nama Mishnupudaya Krishna Krishnaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Niti Namine Nama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Viraha Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 uh, 1987, uh, right, Chaitanya Chan, that's when I first did initiations. Yes. And so, so that happens to be 36 years, 36 years ago. Mm -hmm. So getting on to 40, 40 years. Uh, and and I was already anyway I was already getting on I was in four, 40 years old so uh, time moves on and in that period of time I just read out some number which was uh, approaching uh, 900 uh, there's certain dynamic practicalities of associating with uh, uh, 900 disciples, but uh, ultimately Srila Prabhupada says that yes, that's a study that always makes time to uh, give his association, give his Sangha uh, to those who ask for it. Um, I, I moved in the temple uh, uh, I moved in the temple in 1973, uh, and Srila Prabhupada passed away in 77. I sort of first came in contact uh, at quite a distance with Krishna consciousness uh, around 10 years earlier in 1967. So, uh, so 77 years, uh, that's, been, uh, that's been a long time. Uh, that's uh, getting on to 50 years and that we're living with Srila Prabhupada's Fani. And while uh, from a philosophical point of view, Vani is the essence of Sangha, of association, on the other hand, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, the, the Lava Matra Sarva City Boy. It's talking about uh, association, the physical association, because uh, Vani, Vani is not limited to one eleventh of a second. Vani, you can have there's no no limitation. Put you down. Yeah. So. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no limitation. We, uh, but uh, we have been missing Srila Prabhupada. There are many, many things, uh, um, many aspects of Krishna consciousness that Srila Prabhupada really filled with his physical presence. And of course, one was that 
here was actually our spiritual father, aside from the founder charter of the movement, the person who could give an answer to everything, who could settle any disagreement, whose word was final, at least for, I don't know, 95% of the, the movement. And, uh, and now that's, uh, that's absent. And there's a sort of a natural sense of loss, although on another side, just day before yesterday, I had a really nice dream of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, so the Sangha, the uh, association uh, is there some, in other forms. But if, uh, if you want to get to know somebody, if you want to get too close uh, to spiritual master, if you want to know what it is to actually serve uh, Vapu, uh, then, then you should take advantage of that now because it's not going to be there forever. I mean, that's just the nature of the world. Uh, I can't say how long, we'll just see Prabhupada left the world when he was 81 years old, which is extremely young for someone who lived such a pure life, a sinless life, uh, as Srila Prabhupada, there was no reason uh, why he should die of physical ailment. Of course, the reason was that Krishna wanted him to go back to Godhead. So, uh, but we don't know when it happens. We were just out a few days back for the Thiro Baba uh, on the Ganga, Ganga ceremony of one of very wonderful uh, disciple, Prabhakar Prabhu, who's 40 years old. So you, you don't know when it happens. You don't know when it happens to you. Uh, and don't know when it uh, necessarily happened to me. So this is something that, you know, if you want to take advantage of it, don't, don't put it off. Uh, I give one example that you may have heard before, and that was that in 1977, in uh, as early as June, Prabhupada said, Anyone, any devotee who wants to come, they should come. So that was like pretty, uh, pretty, you mean, you know, any devotee in ISKCON, you mean all of ISKCON can come here to Vrindavan. And Prabhupada said, let them come. So Srila Prabhupada, you know, who for the uh, 12 years that he was with us was always hammering the importance of duty, uh, doing, uh, doing the needful, that physical association wasn't important. The important thing was uh, serving the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the order of the spiritual master. Now Prabhupada said, just drop it. Forget, forget the book distribution. Uh, you know, Obviously, some deity worship has to go on. Uh, and just uh, whoever wants to come should come. And Prabhupada sent out three telegrams. That was how we used to have communication in those days to ISKCON. And uh, those telegrams never got to the people they were intended to name his disciples. We heard about them, but our temple president said, no, I mean, that's not, you know, the important thing is, and of course that was with well-meaning, good meaning. Uh, I won't tell you who my temple president was at that time, but uh, they uh, said that, you know, Prabhupada always emphasized, you know, Vani, doing book distribution, what's more important than that? But Prabhupada said, anyone should come wants they can come so that uh, why because Prabhupada knew that he wasn't staying any longer and that his days were really numbered 
and whatever devotees could do, what happens if all, all the, I don't know, 5,000 initiated disciples all of a sudden turned up in Vrindavan? Uh, we never had that many devotees in Prabhupada's time, maybe a thousand or five thousand. So what, what would they be able to do? Anyway, Krishna make an arrangement, something. Something that you know devotees would uh, uh, not, not forget. I mean, we used to, even when uh, we used to go during the festival 75, 76, 77, uh, here in Mayapur, uh, Prabhupada used to give darsha. And interestingly, sometimes I, sometimes I went in the darsha room, Prabhupada was there. And there's nobody there. I just went off into a corner and I just sat there. And then in time, some devotees came, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't full. It was Prabhupada was giving darshan. Uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of devotees. They didn't, they didn't come up. And, uh, you know, we would go on top of like the long building to see Prabhupada walking on the roof of uh, of the lotus building uh, that's how we got to see him see proper there in Brindavan. we just sort of stood at the little garden in the front that looked into his darshan and although it was impossible to look in because it's so bright outside and it's so dark inside but still we we're trying to see what we could see and all of those things were were valuable. Uh, so, uh, yes, it, it's uh, it, it's something that you know when we talk about introduction, when we're talking about acceptance and getting to know, there are you know some devotees. I mean, relatively. A few devotees by comparison to that 850 uh, a, a handful of devotees who I really know well basically because I interact with them a lot or just because I have such a long standing relationship with them from with Gornitai and going back all the way to when, when we were hiding from the police and so on so First Sankatan leader, well, book distribution leader. He didn't even know what Sankatan was, <laughs> but got to, got to learn it. So, uh, yeah. So that I think I'm uh, harping on the point, and uh, you can understand what it is that uh, that they're saying. Uh, I'm just going to speak a little on this topic about taking advantage of Krishna consciousness. Now I was speaking about take advantage of the association. If you're going to select somebody as your spiritual master, don't accept someone as a spiritual master so that you got, for the rest of your life, you just got a picture on a shelf. Uh, as much as possible, uh, try and get personal association. It will make the picture, you will be, be uh, you will end up with just the picture on the shelf uh, uh, anyway in due course of time, but it will make the value and the reality and the connection uh, with both the picture and the instructions much, uh, much more, uh, much more vibrant, much more real. I remember one of our temple presidents uh, once told me something. I don't particularly believe it, but it was striking that he thought that way. He said, you know, uh, Guru Maharaj, that uh, the way that uh, Prabhupada's disciples accept and relate to Srila Prabhupada uh, and take Krishna consciousness so uh, seriously, uh, the successive generations don't do that. So 
whether it has uh, uh, truth to it uh, or not, but it's certainly a, of course, no one's competing with Srila Prabhupada, or no one can compete with Srila Prabhupada, but at the same time, it's a, uh, uh, it's a reality that uh, as, as we get more and more distant from Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, people who directly heard and associated uh, the chances of the message getting diluted increases more and more, as well as the dedication increases more and more. Okay, so. Uh -huh. Devotees who are just a little something when uh, devotees or disciples want to know how they're, they're supposed to, don't lean on your knee. In other words, uh, when a, a devotee sit in Bhagavatam class, when they sit, they're supposed to sit very straight, very upright in a Vedic culture, in a Gurukula, the disciple have the hands out like this or like this. Why do they have their hands like this? Because they're receiving something. Uh, anyway, when you're taking notes, that's fine, but it's so that we're uh, we're very alert and that uh, we're we're very serious. Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada was very tolerant, you know. Although we may have had a certain type of unique dedication to Srila Prabhupada, uh, our generation of devotees, uh, you know, we had. Yeah, we devotees. Uh, Devotees used to fall asleep a lot. One reason was they ate a lot. I mean, a real lot. And uh, the other one is we slept really little. I mean, it took, you know, one minute over six hours and, you know, you're out the door. Uh, it was very, uh, and, you know, everybody, everybody has to be there. You go to sleep at midnight, you got to be there for Mongol It doesn't matter. So, you know, there were occasions the devotees were fanning Srila Prabhupada and they just fell asleep from <laughs> right across, right, right in Prabhupada, straight left on the, on the floor. The Prabhupada didn't say anything. He just <laughs> We saw that the devotees really, really worked hard. Um, now we're talking about in general. Uh, I think I spoke about this uh, verse not long ago because uh, I don't know whether it was quoted when I gave class, but uh, the year that uh, the year that I uh, moved in the temple, actually, that's uh, 50 years ago. We're going to have a celebration 50 years ago. Uh, and, uh, but prior to moving in, I was living out, out in the country up in the Laurentians, uh, it was winter, and their winter meant snow, endless amounts of snow, and so much snow that you'd get snow in, and, uh, or, you know, if I let the dog out, he, it was too deep for him, he just got lost in the snow, he just <laughs> have to jump out. Um, and uh, I remember reading, I was reading uh, Bhagavatam at that time. This is the second canto. And I came across this verse and it really uh, struck a chord with me. Uh, it rang a bell. It was uh, where Sukadev Goswami here says, Ayur Harati Vaipunksa Udyan Astam Chayana Show. And for translators, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this. I don't know if you've got 
uh, Bhagavatam in your telephone, but uh, second canto, uh, chapter three, text 17. And uh, who knows that verse? Ayo Harati Vai Pungsa. One, two, three. Nobody else. Hare Krishna. Both by rising and setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of Godhead. Um, let's just repeat that together. Both by rising and by setting, the sun decreases. The duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of God. I realized I'm dying. And uh, I got only so much time. Here says I should use my time when we're going to talk about this uh, for by discussing uh, the Krishna Kata, Tava Kata, the Jeeva Nam. So uh, let me just read a little of. of uh, the purport. This verse indirectly confirms the greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and the sunset will be uselessly wasted if such time is not properly utilized for realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be uh, compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to a living entity, Jiva, so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. Um, we were just reading in Srimad Bhagavatam today, uh, Gormani was reading to me, where specifically it's described how human form of life is very rare. It's very special. It's a very special form. You know that there's 8,400,000 forms of life, 400,000 are sort of human, but most of those are, are sort of primitive forms of life. Uh, what exactly that means, uh, you know, we can think about Krishnade saying things like that is uh, controversial. We can think about forest dwellers or Aboriginal or something like that. Or we can think about, I don't know, on Mars, uh, green, green Martians uh, made out of cheese, or, or and uh, and it's rare. And amongst most of those people, it's very rare that a human being actually takes to Krishna consciousness. But once you come to Krishna consciousness, then it shouldn't be wasted. So rising and setting, the sun, sunrise, sunset. The sun rises and the sun sets. We ha have this very optimistic view of our existence and we call it living. But that's incorrect, isn't it? I mean, you're not living, you're dying. You're dying, it's a process of death and when you you know at certain points it starts to become very acute but whether you're three years old or 93 years old you're dying 
uh, from the moment you come out of the womb. And now people may say, you know, well, you know, don't be so pessimistic. Oh, yeah, to pessimistic, I'm just telling you what's happening. <laughs> it's, it's reality. This is the reality. Everybody's dying, and we don't know just exactly how long we are meant to live. So we're in the process of dying, and the sun rise and sunset is like a metronome, and it's telling the time we're rising and we're coming closer and closer and closer, everyone to their own death. The non-devotee, they're just wasting, absolutely wasting their time. There's no, no meaning to their life. Why? Because they're going to die. And there's a good chance that they're going to lose the human form of life. And who knows when they're going to come around to it again. And if you do come around to it during uh, Kali Yuga, uh, that may not be a good idea either. So, uh, but here, and, uh, you know, when, when we say this, that, so, when did we start? When we started at seven. Here, when we say that, uh, that by rising and setting, sun decreases the duration of everyone, except those who discuss the topics what does that sound like i mean what does it what does it say literally speaking that they don't die it says that devotees actually don't die now do devotees die or not they die the Bhagavatam says they don't die. Hmm. I mean, everybody's body dies, so there's no whether you're a devotee or a non devotee. So, yeah, you don't die. Devotees don't die. Um, and uh, Srila Prabhupada doesn't. Uh, Describe, describe this here, but uh, in his uh, commentary, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur does. He says, devotees do not die. It looks like they die. Uh, they have a sense of passing away in order and getting old in, in order to increase their desire for Krishna. But they actually don't die. It's just an appearance that they've actually died to, obviously, uh, it would disturb a lot of non-devotees uh, if, uh, you know, devotees just didn't die. <laughs> and the other is it would expose the potency of bhakti yoga which should be kept hidden because it's very confidential. So people, I don't know, you can tell anybody about this. No one's going to believe you that you don't die. But that's actually what does happen according to the statement of except one who utilizes the tongue, you don't die. So literally speaking, uh, that's why Often when, you know, devotees are getting sick or passing away, I try to tell devotees that there's more here than meets the eye. You, you, you're not seeing everything that's going on. And devotee may be in pain, devotee may be uh, dying and so on, but someone who has dedicated their life to the service of the Lord, someone who glorifies Krishna, uh, not only amongst devotees, each other, but actually to non-devotees as well. Uh, and elsewhere it's described, right, that they step on the head of death. So, 
Uh, they don't die. That's a good prospect, outlook. Just have to also be in the right uh, consciousness, of course. So, uh, but we should see how wonderful and how powerful devotional service is. Service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his movement is, this is just one of the many, many uh, glories and wonders uh, of, uh, of devotional service that really separates uh, devotees from religionists, philosophers, impersonalists, uh, materialistic people, and so on. They, they, they can't have the faintest idea uh, of uh, what Krishna consciousness. For them, it's, it's another religion. But it's not another religion. It's re this is reality. And everything else is illusion or at best, something that's trying to point to reality. So uh, we shouldn't give up that, lose that opportunity somehow or another. Uh, and we were on the boat and I was uh, explaining uh, the uh, other day, somehow or another, we should take advantage. The Prabhupada had this word taking advantage which, you know, isn't the common usage. Of course, Prabhupada had his own vocabulary. It's like in Hungarian, I've got my vocabulary. And the Prabhupada had his English vocabulary. So, uh, take advantage uh, or uh, jubilant, they jubilate. <laughs> That's the first time we ever heard of the word when I came to Krishna consciousness and uh, so many others. So make the most, because take advantage actually means that you exploit somebody or something. So that's the, what Prabhupada's talking about. Taking advantage means make the most of this opportunity, because it's rare. Now many devotees may have performed devotional service in their past life. Uh, and uh, whether they perform devotional service in their past life, uh, or not, but everyone, Krishna has a lot of Vaishnavas, uh, a specific service, something which they're meant to fulfill here uh, in this world. How do you know what Krishna wants you to do? Well, I mean, you hear it all the time. It's sort of coming down. It comes down to Guru Mukha Padma Vakya. It comes down to the spiritual master, it comes down to the GBC and temple president and uh, uh, department head and so on, that ultimately you're given, do this. And until you're moved from here to here, uh, then, then you accept, this is what Krishna wants me to do. This is my mission in life. And when someone fulfills that mission, when they complete it, then Krishna may take you back to uh, uh, Godhead, may take you to the next place to uh, preach Krishna consciousness. Anyway, that then becomes between the devotee and the Lord. Uh, of course, when devotees take their own initiative and they start moving, oh, I do this and I do that, and when you step out, then you may be stepping out of Krishna's mission. Krishna's service for you, and then you're on your own. So it may feel good, but you're on your own. So this whole idea of I'm given a certain mission, and at a certain point, we complete that. So, like for instance, Srila Prabhupada, uh, I, there was, uh, we were literally speaking infants in spiritual life uh, when, uh, you know, Srila Prabhupada left this world. So the oldest devotee was a 12-year-old devotee who's been around more than 12 years. 
who's been in crystal consciousness more than 12 years. <coughs> Don't you put your hands up, you're 18 years old. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, so it's uh, it's something that I, I uh, uh, lost away. Oh, yes. Uh, so, and what you, uh, and Srila Prabhupada, Krishna had sent Prabhupada for a certain purpose. Uh, you know, Prabhupada, uh, that was, Prabhupada very rarely would make extraordinary statements. It was very rare that Prabhupada would say something special about himself. Or sometimes, you know, when devotees would say, oh, Prabhupada, when we take, take over the world, you'll become, you'll become the king. You know, Prabhupada says, I'm more than any king. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, Srila Prabhupada on one occasion, just to a few devotees, uh, Prabhupada was talking and he just started saying, you know, I was... Krishna wanted me to come to the material world. I didn't want to go. I, I didn't want, want to go. So you can see that even in the spiritual world, there's opportunity to disagree with Krishna. So I didn't want to go. And Krishna said, no, you go, you write your books, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll take care of everything. No, I don't want to go there. It's such a horrible place. No, you go. Ultimately, Krishna always gets his way. So... So Srila Prabhupada went and Prabhupada didn't finish Bhagavatam was his mission. He didn't finish the Bhagavatam. He got as far as chapter 14 and that was it. Uh, but once Krishna considered that Srila Prabhupada had finished his mission, then, then he went. He took it. So uh, so we should be very conscientious about this opportunity that we have, about a specific service that we have, uh, because we have a very wonderful future ahead of us. Uh, it may look like we're going to die, but no, we're going to enter into the, uh, just leave this body, uh, Naira Muni said, it's just like lightning and thunder. He says, I gave up one body and took the other, just like lightning and thunder. So first you see the lightning, and then because sound travels slower than light. So first you see the lightning. And lightning and thunder, one here, immediately you enter into the womb of a gopi, in the material world, wherever Krishna is engaging in his pastime, and you take birth there. And there you actually advance further. We should, we should advance as far as uh, it's possible in, uh, in this life, in this material world, uh, which is that we can actually get beyond the modes of material nature. That's why Krishna says, Sagunan Samati Taiva Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpati. So we can get to uh, this Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpati, which means that you get to this uh, stage of Brahma Bhuta. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Sochati Nakangshati Samasa Deshu so come to the stage of Brahma Buddha, transcendental spiritual platform. Uh, and in the next life, really cultivate uh, advanced Krishna consciousness, really develop love for Krishna. Uh, and see Krishna, hear Krishna, as Prabhupada said, uh, Krishna consciousness movement is meant to teach the bodies how to enter into Krishna's dancing party. So Krishna, Krishna has a dancing party every evening. He's got a dancing party at night with gopis during the day. He's dancing with the cowherd boys. So day or night, whichever, you can uh, 
dance with Krishna and chant with Krishna and be with Krishna. And uh, yeah, and he's, he can be your friend. And at the same time, he's, he's unlimited and everything's inside of him and he's inside of everything and he's very inconceivable. But he's not interested in that. He's interested in something different. He's not interested in just everybody being overwhelmed by how great he is. Uh, he's interested in in what's the in the material world, what everybody values the most, which is love. Uh, uh, talk about it the most. I mean, how many songs are there that are not about love? How many movies are there where there's no love? How many plays, how many, it's, it's just everywhere because everyone knows life becomes meaningless when there's no love, even in the material sense. So yes, that's the most valuable commodity. And that's what our Krishna consciousness yesterday was disappearance of uh, Gorgavinda Swami Maharaj uh, how many years? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Oh, 27. 27. Still 27 years ago. Time goes fast. 27 years. And, uh, yeah, he was only 60 years. He was just talking about Krishna to a couple of God sisters. Then all of a sudden he said, I, excuse me, I'm not feeling well. I just lay down and he just passed away. Just like that. Heart attack. That's externally, it looks like heart attack. So, uh, yeah, so we should uh, make the most of our opportunity. It says here, they don't die. Similarly, in other words, there's more to it that meets the eye when a devotee passes away. There's more to Krishna consciousness than what you're seeing. If you want to see more, chant Hare Krishna nicely. And you'll see more. So, Premanjana Chirito Bhakti Vilochanena. According to how well you chant, you'll be actually able to appreciate the real value uh, and the uh, uh, of uh, devotional service of bhakti and uh, what we've actually received. Uh, from Srila Prabhupada and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna. I have to do exercises. I have to chant a few rounds and I need to answer a few urgent messages. At least some people who think that they're urgent. <laughs> um, and, and I should do that all before nine o'clock. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, we had uh, a few questions and then uh, they're not in the chat. No, I'll just put one in the chat now, Gurmaras. This is from Madhupati Prabhu. He's translating at the moment, so he wouldn't be able to read it out anyway. But okay. I'll now. But under all, under all circumstances, Madhupati has to, can, must continue the uh accounting supervision of Nitya Seva's uh properties, Radhisham's properties and uh, and investment fund. That's like his uh Prabhudatta Dash that uh that he should never should never give up. Um, okay, let's let's hear more. Questions in the chat there, very much. Oh, okay. I had to realize that the body is an educational instrument like a globe with a skeleton at school. 
the higher grade you are in, the more serious teachings you get. How can we avoid bodily difficulties distracting us and diverting the focus from the spiritual towards the body, the material? Uh, Well, Srila Prabhupada, uh, once uh, when there was like a lot of noise outside the temple, the devotee was apologizing. I'm sorry, Prabhupada, that you have to be inconvenienced. Prabhupada just stands and he says, for me, everything is an inconvenience. So it's not that, uh, you know, a material world doesn't exist. A Vaishnav uh, accepts the uh, accepts the problems that um, it comes along with the material world uh, and that come along uh, with a, a material body. You can't uh, uh, you can't just be free from that. We're not nullifying that, but. According to one's level of uh, uh, Krishna consciousness, uh, then one may, uh, will, to that degree, it will not affect your uh, your your state of uh, consciousness, your state of attainment. Especially if that attainment is uh, permanent or at least very very strong, uh, then uh, you will. Uh, those things, you will feel those things, but they're not going to affect your consciousness. They will affect our consciousness when we're at the stage of a Kanishta Adhikari or a uh, sort of a new Madhya Madhikari. Uh, but the whole idea is that someone whose uh, faith is very strong, Nishta, Tata Ruchi, Tata Sakti, uh, then Although you may feel all the inconveniences of material life, but it doesn't, this Krishna consciousness doesn't waver. So, and that's why it's important to take advantage of the time now. So, Pladmara said, Komarat Achara Praya, when you're young, do it now. Get your Krishna consciousness up there now. Uh, because when it gets you get old, it becomes much more difficult. We got no time. So we're all used to, you know, you go on to school, you go to grade school, I don't know how many years. You go to grade schools, I, I went for seven years, high school is four years, university is uh, four or five years, you get out, you got a diploma, and, you know, you got to put in so many years, everyone is so many years. And uh, Krishna consciousness, it's not like a four-year course. It's called your life. How long your life is, that's how long the course is. And uh, it may not be enough. Your life may not be enough. So uh, there's no time to waste. Uh, we really got to, we really have to go all out, be extremely serious uh, about our practices. And uh, if, uh, if we do, then especially when the time that these things come around, uh, they will come around uh, with age, but sometimes they come around much, much earlier. Much earlier. There was this one girl in Hungary who, her brother, brought her to the temple when she was about four and uh, told me that uh, you know i should you know i should bless her because she's got cancer four years old she has cancer by the time she was eight eight years old she was she had chemotherapy and i was on steroids she was about three times the size that she's meant to be and when she was, I think, 12 years old, she passed away. So it, it will be, it will come with age, but uh, it may not wait till then either. So your karma doesn't wait either. 
it will come whenever it comes. Or at least Krishna will dose out uh, a dose of it. So we we shouldn't waste time. Ideal sadhana, uh, chanting minimum 16 rounds, uh, reading and studying Srimad Bhagavatam, avoiding frivolous things, frivolous sports, frivolous activities, stay away from, you know, social media, uh, at least in any kind of, uh, you know, unnecessary, if it's simply meant for, as a communication tool, like what we would use telephones for before, uh, fine, uh, but very minimal. Um, we shouldn't waste time. Ayur harati vai punksam tasam asatriyana. So everyone should know that verse. It's a, it's a very important verse. Okay, Chaitanya Chandra, we sort of reached our time. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, such a huge uh, group of uh, devotees, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. Uh, I thank everybody for uh, coming. And uh, I'm just uh, looking to see if, uh, if uh, Ramapriya is here. Uh, I don't know whether he was because he was sick. He's over here in Mayapur, but he was sick. He was here earlier, but he mentioned that the nurse might come and visit. And so then oh. disconnect. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you all uh, so much. And uh, really uh, hope, to, hope to see you uh, soon. Hope to see you soon. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I should have Hare broke. Jai. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 Thank you.